You've just joined the Prepper Broadcasting Network, where we promote self-reliance and independence. The views and opinions expressed are strictly those of the host or their guests. Visit us in the interactive chat room at PrepperBroadcasting.com. If you have questions or comments during tonight's broadcast, the call-in number to get on the air is 1-347-202-0228. After you've connected, remember to press 1 so our producer will see you want to be on the air. If you're listening to this show over on Blog Talk or any other website that carries the player, you can also listen and join us in the chat room at PrepperBroadcasting.com. Scroll down the screen about midway. You'll see the player. Click play to listen. Um, Just below that, you'll see uh, chat room. Put in your username and click connect. And you can also chat with us in the chat room while we're live. Anyway, I'd like to wish everyone a happy Independence Day weekend. And I want to thank those of you who are tuning in live to take the time out of your weekend to listen to tonight's show. We have a really great topic to discuss tonight that I think fits right in with the subject of our nation's independence. Our co-host tonight is Dave. He's one of our authors on Golf Strike, and he goes by Dave1678. Welcome to the show, Dave. How are you doing? Doing well, Tom. How are you? Good. Glad to have you on. I think this is a really good topic. Um, anyway, to bring up our listeners to speed, Dave wrote an article a couple of weeks ago titled, Take Me to Your Leader. And so that's what we're going to discuss today, who actually is our leader. Um, anyway, Dave, you want to get started and, and give a little background on that article and, uh, um, bring people up to speed on this topic of who our leader actually is, because I think a lot of people don't know. Absolutely. Uh, it's an interesting question I pondered a while back while just uh, just listening to TV and the radio, and a, a comedian, some people may be familiar with, Chris Rock, was uh, talking about Barack Obama and saying that he is like our father, we had better listen to him, that Michelle is like our mother. And, and <laughs> you know, these people are our are, are leaders. You know, he's the boss. And, and I thought about that for a little while, and my, my actual thought is the president's not supposed to be our boss. He's supposed to be a representative. He's supposed to represent the country in matters of war and, and the executive. He's supposed to repeal laws that are against the Constitution. Uh, you know, that I thought, well, does that make our... House of Representatives, the Senate type, our leaders, and I. But again, no, these people are supposed to create, you know, spend our money properly, uh, ensure defense, ensure our borders. Uh, the closer you get to yourself, the governor of your state, uh, an executor of, of the government, not of the people. You know, they say the government is the people. I say that the that that's not necessarily true. The people are their own government. 
individually. And as a group, they get together to try to build a society. True, but ultimately, when somebody asks you who is your leader, you should say me, myself. I am self-determined. I decide what I want to do. Nobody points me in the direction. Uh, nobody's going to point to me and say you have the right idea for a ballad deer, so you get to go be in the ballet, or I'm sorry, you look like you should take ditches the rest of your life. Nobody does that. You determine your own life, your decisions. You may not always get the life you want, but you oftentimes get the life you earn through your own decisions. So when somebody asks or says, this is a person who should be leading us, then I kind of think that you say, I lead myself. I decide where I go. You know, even yes. your employer couldn't even be classified as your leader because he only has the rights to your person and your time that he pays for. And well, you yeah, have the right to even time you wish. Your employer is more like, um, I like to think of your employer, your boss, I like to think of them more like as your customer, that you're serving them for the, you know, in exchange for the, you know, just just like if you were self-employed. So you can be um, a self-employed contractor and contracting out to somebody, and that person's your customer. How is that any different if you're that person's employee? So I like to think of the employer as your customer, and you have, uh, you know, mutually agreed upon, um, you know, term of employment or rate of pay or whatever you agreed to when you went to work for them, so they're really not your leader. Exactly. And, you know, again, they're in charge of that piece of time they purchase. I mean, if you really want to look back in in history, when when we lost the idea of representation, and some people would call it the whiskey insurrection, the moment that the federal government decided to tax a sin, according to whomever, um, I honestly think it was kind of around when we passed 16th, 17th, and 18th Amendments. Uh, to the Constitution, um, all of which even today have residual problems. Yeah. I mean, if, uh, I, I don't know how, how familiar everybody is with that. That's income tax, prohibition, and directly electing senators. A lot mm-hmm. of people don't realize that at one point in time, the Senate, is, the Senate was elected by the state legislation of each state, <clears throat> giving not, I don't want to say more educated group, but you know, uh, perhaps you had to bribe fewer people, but you were beholden to fewer people. They didn't get to go out and talk to everybody who had money and, and say, you can purchase me for this much. The state legislation had control over them. Yeah. Uh, uh, of course, the income tax, being taxed for having a job, I mean, that's a percentage of slavery. I cannot earn a living in this country unless I give the devil his due, if you will, for no other purpose than existing, having a job, earning some money, contributing to the economy, which the government now has no need to do anything about. I mean, if the economy's bad, they still get their, their wages, no matter what happens. And, of course, prohibition was the first attempt to socially engineer us, saying we don't want you to drink anymore. We want to take away your most common recreational and medicinal aspect. I mean, we didn't have very good painkillers back then that weren't very intense, heroin, cocaine, things of that nature. So we're going to stop drinking. And just a few years later, they had to repeal it just because of the amount of crime that it brought forth. Exactly. I kind of you think know, of that as, uh, I think of that as like same same problem with the war on drugs. They've done nothing to slow down the flow of drugs in a country. It's actually made it worse. And the same thing will happen if they ever manage to ban firearms. Uh, the only people that's going to stop is innocent, law-abiding citizens, but it will make the flow of illegal firearms much worse. So exactly. any, any, any time they restrict a liberty, it makes it worse. Well, any time the government takes its own liberty, which is the problem. Uh, The war on drugs, you described that. That was done without constitutional amendment. The federal government decided we don't like it, so you can't do it. And I I wish we could change the minds of all these people saying, let's legalize marijuana, let's legalize drugs. This is America. You cannot legalize things in America. 
things here are illegal until some damn fool writes a law about it and says no longer can you do it. And you know, I well, hear. Well, I don't people, even I don't even understand how federal government is able to have a law on that because that's in violation of the Tenth Amendment. Exactly, and I, I'm just surprised that more states haven't sued under the Tenth Amendment. Uh, but then you yeah. go to probably the worst checks and balance section nowadays, which is SCOTUS, the Supreme Court of the United States. I mean, those guys don't even read the Constitution anymore. They're basically political puppets. It's horrifying to think that they're supposed to be the the true stalwarts of the Constitution. And they basically say, well, this is what it says here if you read it with your head turned sideways and a chicken bone up your nose. I mean, it's just, I don't really understand how some of these interpretations come about. We put lawyers in charge of making laws. These are the type of laws we get. Laws that can be manipulated, laws that can be torn apart. As far as taking away our guns, that is, they would literally have to make a constitutional amendment or there would be another insurrection, I believe. And and I honestly believe that would be the largest desertion of the military that ever existed. As soon as they put tanks on the ground, the government would realize, wait a minute, this still truly is the people's government. Yeah. That is why they want to do it in increments. That's why they want to talk about uh, Muslims shooting people up and it's the gun's fault because, of course, the person holding it had nothing to do with it. So uh, let's go over some of these people in positions in government and talk about what their rightful place is in government and why they're not each of them are not our leader um i actually post post that question to a lot of people and i did get some responses from people saying um god's my leader and i say okay i mean und- you know if, if that's your faith your religion um god would be your your spiritual leader no doubt but even in Psalm 81:12, God has left us to our own devices, so we are responsible for providing our own government. So when it comes to government and operating our country, God isn't our leader. He's given that to us to decide, and so it's our responsibility to put in a uh, just and righteous government that not only, um, uh, you know, protects us and makes us safe, but also protects our freedoms from anyone that would want to take those freedoms away. So let's go over some of these different positions. For example, you brought up Chris Rock talking about Obama and Michelle Obama, Barack Obama and Michelle Obama is being like our dad and mom. That's that's ridiculous. But tell us why the president in that position is not our leader, and how do they actually relate to us in that position? Well, a lot of people want to look at the president like he was sovereignty at one point in time. And sovereignty's last little, little title was protector of the realm. Of course, he had all kinds of things before that. The president is commander-in-chief of the army. Not commander-in-chief of the country. Commander-in-chief of the army. He is the executive, Mm -hmm. and his job is to keep the the country sovereign. It's his job to veto bills that he sees as unconstitutional, or, you know, (laughs) God help us, but she sees as unconstitutional. That was their original position. They were the head of state meaning they were our diplomatic face to the world. Mm -hmm. Again, their their involvement in our day-to-day lives was non-existent. The only reason they would have an interest in our lives in any way, form, or fashion is in times of war, legitimate war, when the Congress agrees to it. I mean, the president can't declare war. We can go off Mm -hmm. and do things that are are inappropriate, uh, bomb and, and even put troops on the ground. But if you look at the, the times where Congress did not agree to put us to war, it's taken us years and years and years. They could pull funding. They could ruin what has happened to troops. I mean, 
In World War II, we went there and we fought and we won and they fought without mercy. They went in and did their job. We will destroy everything in our power. We even dropped an atomic bomb. In Vietnam, and they didn't go to Congress to declare war. They pulled funding. They abandoned, essentially, our troops because of things that were going on in college campuses. I mean, it's mm-hmm. there, there's obvious checks and balances there. And I don't believe that the president himself is our leader in that sense. Yes, he commands the army, but he has to have Congress's approval to go to war. Congress isn't mm-hmm. our leader. They just happen to write laws and spend our money. Mm-hmm. We've given them a certain leadership status, again, when we passed the Income Tax Amendment. That was fairly destructive, in my opinion. And it was given the guys, we're only going to take 5% from anybody who makes a million dollars a year. And that was in, you know, uh, I can't remember, in the 20s, I believe. And that was, back then, a, a lot of money. Well, mm-hmm. here we are today, where the, the lowest income people are getting 20% of their income taken away from them. Mm-hmm. And then again, you start looking at local governments. You look at some of the more horrifying states that have income tax at a state level because they can't even keep their state house in order. And yet, in one of the biggest ones, California, they want to start taking your rights away. They want to enforce more gun laws. And they have some of the most violent inner cities on the planet. Then you look at, you know, very local systems. I can't I can't remember the last time I didn't hear on the radio where somebody wanted, uh, we want to be like this city or that city. The reason we're like the city we live in is because it's what's best for the local people. Instead of looking outwards to... Los Angeles or New York, look at, you know, um, Tennessee. You know, Memphis, Tennessee should be Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, you know, uh, San Antonio, Texas should be San Antonio, Texas. Uh, you know, Salt Lake City should be Salt Lake City, Utah. There's a reason governments are a little closer to home. It's easier to change laws locally than it is on a federal level. So, so I want to go back looking- to... I want to go back to the president for a moment. Um, Okay. So even though he's commander-in-chief of the military, okay? Yes, sir. um, We're an all-volunteer military. um, And every U.S. serviceman that enters the military is sworn to an oath. And so they follow the president because they're, they have a contractual obligation to follow the president um, and a moral obligation. But even then, you're not required to follow unconstitutional orders. That's why groups like uh, Oath Keepers have formed up. The president can't order the military to do something unconstitutional or something that the president has no authority to order them to do. And so as um even as a military you if the if the president is ordering the military, hey, you go out and go door to door to people's homes and uh you know or confiscate their weapons as a be in the military, you have an obligation to refuse that order. Um, so even from the perspective of, I mean, yeah, you could say he's your leader if you're if you're in the military, but um, you know you have a duty to not follow unconstitutional orders. So even then, he's not an absolute leader, even if you're um, even if you're in the military. Well, I think um, we have to start out there. The oath they take, the Constitution is the first thing they claim, they, they swear an oath to defend. And then yes. it is to their superior officers. Yes. Yeah, that's what people have to remember is that we're a nation of laws, and those laws are put into place by the people through, through our elected representatives. So let's talk about those elected representatives. First of all, the the president, the president is a public servant that we've elected to administer. That's why they call it administration. Administer our country. I kind of think of the people, us, all the citizens, 
as owners of this country. We're like shareholders of this country, and we've elected a CEO who works for us, who's employed by us, to administer our country. That's kind of the way I look at it. Um, I don't know your thoughts on that. Well, he's... But aren't we... No, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, well, no, yeah, go ahead. Got... He said he's head of state, he's our diplomatic group, and he's head of the military. But he's not particularly head of the government because he's not involved in lawmaking. He's also not directly involved in our spending of money. He can veto a bill that says how we're going to spend our money, but he has to be two-thirds of the Congress, which is directly elected by the people. Mm -hmm. So in all reality, he's he's our head of state and head of military. He's in charge of, of, of our sovereignty, ensuring our sovereignty as a nation and that is his service to the people, in my opinion. Um, everything that I've read or looked at. Um, and, and like I said, when you talk about our, our, our representatives, I'm, I'm assuming Congress, um, their job is to write laws. Um, and, and what's odd is at one point in time, we started to let them write laws about our safety. I think this is partially when we lost it when we talk about prohibition. Um, they say, we don't like you to do this because it's unsafe. But at what point in time do they own our lives? At what point in time do they own our safety? We've allowed them to say, we're writing this law for your safety, and then we find out their favorite term is unintended consequences of writing a law. I think that we forgive them a little too much, and we should remove the term unintended. We should just live, understand that there are consequences law, and when you have consequences of the things that you do, they need to change or be removed. I mean, if you hit your thumb with a hammer 20 times, you're going to change the position of your hand. Mm -hmm. so, our, so our elected representatives, they are supposed to pass the laws. Since they're our representatives, they're supposed to pass laws that we want them to pass. Um, but explain their position, their role in government, and why Congress, even though they're representing us, why they're not our leader. Well, they're not our leader simply because they have no direct... I'm still self-determinate. No matter what law they write, uh, jaywalking or anything, uh, it doesn't affect my self-determination. I mean, laws are... People break them all the time. Um, mm -hmm. there's a great book out there called Three Felonies a Day, and I, I can't remember the author. I'd have to look it up. But he describes how you probably commit, you break the law three or four times. So we've allowed these representatives to claim leadership and write such laws to where breaking it is almost impossible not to do, which that is, <clears throat> like I said, they're not our leaders, but they're doing their best to try to do it. I mean, the Affordable Health Care Act, is one of the perfect examples of here's a law. I mean, Nancy Pelosi even said the most ridiculous thing ever. We have to pass it to find out what's in it. And, you know, 50% of the Americans went, oh, yeah, that's cool. I don't understand that, that, <laughs> that we're actually writing a piece of legislation that is 2,400 pages long. I mean, the Constitution is only, what, 4,000 words? We allowed yeah. a law to be passed that was 2,400 pages, how are we not going to break that law somehow? That's, I mean, I don't even think, Atlas Shrugged is only, what, 1,000 pages, 1,100, something like that? Yeah. So, I mean, when when, I, when you say they're not our leaders, it's because we are still, even with all the craziness going on, self-determined. They cannot decide what we do for a living. They cannot decide who we marry. They cannot decide how many children we have. They can't decide what kind of dog I want, where I live. Um, our decisions still affect us. But at one point in time, we allowed them to solve our bad decisions, and that's when we started to look at them like they're some sort of leader. I've made a mistake. Please help me. That has extended all the way into the corporate world, where we now see the corporation saying, well, we made a mistake, but that's okay. The government's going to bail us out. I think as soon as we, the people, stop looking at them as our leaders, and start looking at them as our representatives and realize they're no longer representing us, they will get a backlash like the uh, the uh, colonies started when they initiated the Stamp Act. 
Yeah, when you look at uh, the definition of leader versus the definition of representative, they mean com two completely different things. And so when I'm thinking of a representative, I think of somebody that's working for me, not somebody that's leading me. I think of myself as being the leader, and I've delegated responsibility to them on my behalf, but that doesn't um, take away my position as being a leader. I think right. people need to... People think of the country as kind of like this top-down pyramid where the president is at the top and the Congress below him and the governors below them and and all the state governments below them and the mayors and the city councils below them and here we're at the very bottom. And I think we kind of need to turn that pyramid the other way around, upside down, and imagine all of the people being at the top and all of these other representatives all working to serve our interests. And I think the power should be divided that way. It should be the power the majority of the power should rest with the citizens, you know, as far as what we can do and what we can't do um, should be should be very limited. I mean, with countries have been, what are we, 200 and I don't know the exact number of years. Um, not good with math. Anyway, um, for all these years, we've been creating all these laws. I mean, I, the way I see it, I think after the first few years of Congress meeting in Washington, D.C. after the founding of this nation, that should have been it. They should have been done and not had anything else to do. They, you know, uh, maybe meet once, a, once for one time during their entire election or, you know, their entire term, and say, hey, guys, how is do how, how are you guys all doing? Let's have a little barbecue dinner and go home. That's about all they should have to do when they go to Washington. They shouldn't be passing these laws. That's not job. You know, the Tenth Amendment specifies that. Now, the, the state governments, yeah, they've got a little more responsibility as far as laws and protecting people. Um but not the federal government. I don't think that's their responsibility at all. Um, no. I believe we got. I believe we got a couple of people in queue, and I want to get their opinions. Um, I'm gonna bring Tony on first. Tony, how are you doing? I'm doing all right. How are you guys? Good. So, what's Good. your mind on, on who is our leader? Well, the the problem that I'm having is is that uh, so if we are a laws, I mean, Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama brought up on charges. Number one, Hillary, I hold a security clearance, and she should be already in jail. Period. And with just with immigration with Barack Obama, why isn't he? You know, it, at least impeached. So it, I don't get it. So you guys are saying we are a nation of laws, and I agree with you. We should be, but we're not. Well, we are. It's just what we have going on here. If you think of it as all of us individuals as being leaders, as being co owners in this country we call America, um, most of those other people that are leaders have fallen asleep at the wheel and our employees in government are have basically created a madhouse of, out of our government. And instead of waking up and, you know, the, the citizens waking up and doing something about it and cleaning house like any employer would do with their employees, um most of the people are just turning the government and saying, fix it. And, well, those are the very people that are creating the mess in the first place. And you tell them to fix it, they're going to fix it on their terms. No, they're not going to fix it at all. They're, they're just going to throw more money at it and, well, and, hey, uh, and, and, and create more bureaucracy. 
Well, here you go. Well, that's what I mean. Their terms, they're fixing it on their terms. I didn't mean they're going to fix it right. Well, Tony, I think you, you're coming to the point, which is America is based upon equal treatment into the law, where these people are getting extra treatment. I mean, it, it's like Animal Farm. Everybody want, They all want to be pigs. They want to be more equal than others. And once we established that type of thing, we started to allow Congress to write laws that they are not part of. And it's the mentality that these people lead us, and they don't. They're not supposed to lead us. They're supposed to represent us. And they should follow the same laws we do. I mean, from the ultimate law, which is the Constitution, to everyone that trickles down. I, I agree, and I think more people should read Animal Farm. It, it, it is really it's, good it's book. a great book. Well, and they need to understand it and have somebody who has half a brain explain it to them. You know how uh, you know Snowball was a noble guy, but unfortunately, somebody's got it in any socialist idea. Somebody has to be in charge of what you get, and that ends up being the proletarian, and they live in golden castles while their people starve and freeze to death. Right. And, this and is what that. This is what this country is not meant to be. Everybody gets treated the same under the law. Can I bounce this off of you guys? I mean, it, it it feels like this administration is just pushing us a little bit more. A little bit more, a little bit more, until we get to a breaking point or something. And it's, I don't know, it, it, it's frustrating. Well, I look at this like a like your child. They've been stomping over the line and throwing a fit, and the parents, the Congress that's supposed to be reining in these unruly children, aren't putting them in the corner or spanking them or punishing them somehow. They're just saying, well, if you're going to scream... I'm going to have to give you some candy. And that's really what the problem is. Uh, that's not the America I grew up in. It's not the America that was written. It's not the America we should live in. Oh, I we should live in an America where, where Hillary Clinton's in jail, Barack Obama has been impeached, and the American people actually should have never elected him, just based on the church he went to, in my opinion. I, I agree. He, when the pe- when the preacher says what the preacher did about America, you know, not God bless America, but GD America, I'm sorry, that's I went there for 20 years and I never heard that. Right? I, I had some problems with that. I'm out in my front yard looking at my American flag right now, and yeah, I mean I got cold chills. Well, and again, the other aspect of this is uh, when you talk about your leaders, we also talk about. Our allegiances. Our allegiances is to the ideal of America, and not the people of, and its government. It's it's, you know, if you listen to the pledge of allegiance, at no point in time are any of our politicians mentioned. You know, you're you're pledging allegiance to the idea, the Constitution, the ideal of America, not the people that happen to be in office temporarily. I mean, nowadays it doesn't seem very temporary. We keep electing people who. You know, <laughs> we we truly are an insane people. We keep inviting them in to do the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. Right. That that that's insanity. And that's the truly unfortunate but, thing hey, about guys, this country. Anyway, and, we've got a we've got a break. We got to go to here. Um, and after the break, Tony, if you want to hold on um, and stay on the line, I I'm I'm going to bring Stell on here, and maybe you can. Um, Give us more opinions later on, but for right now, we need to go to a break. You got it. We have exciting news. You can now afford to have your own freeze dryer. That's right. For the first time ever, it's possible to have a freeze dryer in your home. It was invented right here in America by Harvest Right. With this new appliance, you can freeze dry your own food, and it will last 25 years. Imagine freeze drying fruit, vegetables, meat, and your own homemade meals. It's as easy to use as a microwave. Learn more about this amazing home freeze dryer at HarvestRight.com. Again, that's HarvestRight.com. Where can you find the best in food storage, water purification, heirloom seeds, medical, health, and emergency supplies? LifeReliance.com. What do Mountain House, Legacy Foods, Guardian, Wise Foods, and Relief Foods have in common? LifeReliance.com. Who has the lowest prices, special offers, and free consultation to help you develop an emergency preparedness plan that makes sense for your family. LifeReliance.com. 
Why would Life Reliance do all this? We are family, owned and operated. Let our family help you and your family be prepared. Visit us at LifeReliance.com or call 520-425-9771. TheWonderMill.com, the best grain mills on the market, with the ability to mill several items that many grain mills will not. There are two grain mills to choose from, the Wonder Mill Electric. It's fast and gives you a vast variety of items it can grind. The Wonder Junior Hand Grain Mill can grind a wide variety of things that even some of the most expensive hand grain mills cannot, including oily grains, nuts, and seeds. Learn more about the most resourceful tool that you may ever own. See all the exciting things that Wonder Mill can do for you and what you eat at thewondermill.com. Welcome back, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. Um, I want to remind everyone that the number to call in if you would like to voice your opinion is 1-347-202-0228 and then dial 1. If you're currently online or listening on the phone and would like to uh, chime in, just dial 1 and our producer will know that you want to be on the air. We're talking with Dave and about his article that he wrote about who is actually our leader. I'm going to go ahead and bring Stella on there so she can uh, ask a question. Uh, Tony, if you're still listening, go ahead and hang on. We can uh, um, pick up with you again a little bit later and get more opinions from you. So let's go to Stella. How are you doing, Stella? Fine. How are you all doing? Good. Doing great, Stella. Thanks for coming on. Um. Thanks for asking me. Um, I think I've sent you a note. I've been reading quite a bit of literature today about our country and um, what brought it to light with Tennessee enacting a law that basically shuts down what the federal government can actually do in a state and, you know, using the Second and Tenth Amendments as the backup for that, which if you, you know, know how it works, the Fed can say, oh, you have to do this. You, your state has to do this, but your state has the choice. They don't have to do anything. And I think what's happened over time is that the federal government has gotten money to be a sort of hook, and the states get hooked on the money, and they don't want to let the money go and create their own independent industries and self-sufficiency. So they end up being roped in uh, you know, dragged in by that hook, and it's dangerous. And, and considering that, for example, in North Carolina this week, it was announced that Asheville will have, have to take in 3,000 Muslim refugees. And, oh, gee, we need to lower the rental prices because they're too high for these people. And isn't it nice that you're going to do this? Well, I don't know about anybody else, but I didn't volunteer. And I have had rentals, and you can't do that. Um, but anyway, as far as leadership goes, in the hierarchy of leadership in a in a state and in a county, which is really where you need to start is in your county, the sheriffs are the leaders. They are sworn when they are elected to uphold the Constitution in favor of we, the people. And most of the time you'll find that they will do that, um, and the Fed, will, the Fed backs down from them. Um, and I've talked to several highway patrolmen over the course of the last 10 years about what would you do if the government said, okay, you're going to go house to house and start confiscating materials. And they all say they will go out and act like they're going to do that, but as soon as it's out of sight and away from the people that are issuing the orders, they're going home and get their family and take care of them. Every one of them has said that. So. You have the sheriff's department, which is sworn to protect you as a citizen, and the highway patrol, who will also protect you by just leaving and not doing anything that they're told to do. So, so Dave, that, your thought? Uh, I want to get Dave's opinions on that. Um, Stella brought up a point about brought up this point about um, the sheriff being sworn that their duty is to protect us. And they're sworn to uphold the Constitution as well. Um, but are they really our leader? She said She said that the sheriff is our leader. Are even the sheriff, are they our leader? Well, let me preface this by saying I respect all law enforcement and I respect what they do. 
Um, they're great people. I, I work with a lot of them here in Monta County. But no, they're not our leadership. They're servants as much as anybody else to the Constitution as well as local laws. They're supposed to enforce them, yes. But when it comes to your protection, um, ultimately, at the end of the day, they're there to identify the body afterwards, to take inventory of what was taken afterwards. I mean, not that they don't want to be there at any given moment, but they are bound by all the same laws that you and I are. They're not allowed to come look into your house and search for things that they think are you shouldn't have, not without due process under the law. They lead the county's law enforcement. That's a fact. But as a personal leader, as a leader of the general populace, they're not. The general populace is its own leader, its own sense. That's, that's the point I was trying to make is that when, when we say leadership, yes, we may, we may look to some elected officials as our political leaders. We may look to them as uh, the idea people. But at the end of the day, they don't control our day-to-day -day actions. They don't control what we do for a living. We are self-determinant. And, and again, I don't want to take anything away from law enforcement. I truly appreciate law enforcement on many levels. But my protection is my job, my household. I am the leader of my household, and anyone in it is just as responsible for their safety as I am with mine. Now, I take it upon myself to try to protect the entire household, but my wife owns a gun, too. <laughs> <laughs> and let me tell you something. You don't want to be on the other end of that thing. <laughs> no, you don't. Us ladies can shoot better most of the time than the men. And my husband's always telling me, you got to go practice. And I'm like, hon, when it comes down brass tacks, if you're in front of me, you're done. That's all it is. <laughs> oh, no, my wife does. She stands behind me. I make a better shield. I'm much bigger than she is. Well, he's much bigger than I am, too, but, you know, I, I mean, <laughs> it's a running joke in our house about it. <laughs> and I Absolutely. I actually had, had people come out here that didn't belong, and I flat told them, you want them way more, you better get not come back and get off my property. But um, as far as leadership goes, yes, you're the leader of your family, and, and but it has to go beyond that. You have to start looking at who in your community, you know, that you formed, if you formed a community, who is the leader of that group? Because eventually in order to get past everything that's going to come on to us, we've got to have small groups of people that have a single leader that can represent them that's going to follow what they want done and is willing to do that. Right, you know? but again, at the, end of, at the end of the day, you're describing your representative. You're not describing a leader. You're not describing, uh, you know, and if you're, you're talking about, like, uh, a, a survival situation, uh, you're going to have a very small group of per people, and one person has to, has to lead you in times of battle, or somebody has to be the final decision. Uh, you know, you look at the old pirate ships. Uh, the old pirate captains weren't in charge all the time. They usually had an equal share of anything that they stole or took, the captains were only in charge at times of battle or were the moderators of any kind of real problems. Uh, that's really the only type of quote-unquote leader we would need in a situation like that. We'd need somebody who could actually make the decision that everybody would agree to follow. Um, you know, uh, Catholics have their own churches. Jewish people have their own, or I should say courts. Sometimes the Jewish people have their own courts when there's that type of thing. Um, their leader under that circumstance, moderators predominantly. We need in this in, in this country moderators, not people telling us what to do. Well, when you put somebody up there to be your leader, somebody that you're going to follow, let's put it that way, that person is your leader for only as long as you're willing to follow that person. That's very true. It took, your, it took your own... It took your own personal leadership to make the decision to follow that person, and you should have every right to disassociate with that person at any time that you want. So that really doesn't make them your leader. I mean, I, I kind of think of if I'm going to follow somebody, I think I'm more like a, a role model, if anything, you know, somebody that, that um, you know, I want to follow and, and – 
you know, maybe they're my leader temporarily until I reach another junction in my life where they're no longer going to be my leader. I'm going to do something else. Right. And what I'm saying, I guess, ultimately is you will have people in your life that you will follow under certain circumstances and under certain things. You will have, uh, you know, like like we talked about earlier, your employer, um, even politicians, you may want to understand and appreciate their ideas uh, and get them elected. Um, your sheriff, like you said before, you want to support your sheriff. He's a deterrent to crime, um, and he brings people to justice when it's necessary. But when somebody says, hey, look, I think you should have two kids, not one, that better be your parent wanting grandkids and not, you know, uh, an elected official or even just the neighborhood watch guy. I mean, that's really, I guess, what I'm talking about is there are some things that you're going to have to, not have to, but you choose to follow. But they're sure as hell not our elected officials, and they really are not, you know, even, like I said, our police. They're not there to be listened to. They're to be respected. Their job's very difficult, uh, and they're usually doing what they're doing for a reason. But, again, not to sound weird, but not the boss of me. It's really the kind of mentality you have to yeah. take. Yeah, I think I think the problem with society and why it's so difficult for people to um, accept and understand the form of government we have where we're a self-governed nation, um, because that was something very new to people when our founders created this country. It was a very new concept. Because since the beginning of time, people have had kings and emperors and, you know, leaders that you were forced to follow even if you disagreed with them. Um, since, since it's, you know, since, and actually I, I believe uh, I was reading about this one time, um, that it all, it all started, it could be traced back to the time when mankind came up with the first tool, you know, tool or weapon, whether it's a, you know, means to acquire more food than what they can personally, personally gather themselves. Because prior to that time when people were gatherers, gathered their food, hunted or whatever, it took them all day to find enough food just to feed themselves and their family. And that's it. And And so everybody's time was 100% focused on uh, procuring food and their shelter and their water and defending themselves. But as soon as man... You can blame all the tyranny we have throughout history on man's ability to invent things. Because as soon as we started inventing tools, that freed up people's time to do other things. And as soon as people's time were freed up to do other things leaders started to come in power to exploit that time and form, you know, clans and groups of people to war and fight against their enemies and basically use the people below them as slaves to their cause. So ever since we had the first inventions that allowed us to procure more food than we needed, we have had leaders. And there's been other attempts at doing republics in the past um, but ours is the first of its kind and I don't think we haven't had we haven't kind of I don't like to use the term evolved but we haven't built that into our minds fully because we've had tens of thousands of years of having leaders and for the first time in history we are the leader what's that Dave you, was that you oh, talking sorry. Dave yeah, I didn't, I didn't mean to. No, no, you're good. No, yeah, go ahead. I mean, what's your thoughts on that? I, I think that's how we got oh. in the mess that we're in is people is the peop the fact that people aren't used to being their own leader. Well, and I I kind of agree with you on that, but I have another thought uh, to that uh, degree. We've always had to follow people for certain reasons. Um, he's the better hunter. We do what he says when it's time to hunt. Uh, the elders in our, our camp know how to build 
a better fire, a better shelter. They know the lands better. They've been there for a long time. So when we're traveling, we got to talk to them. Um, but I honestly think that technology, I mean, from the arrow to, um, to computers, have made us more free. And the problem with all that freedom is that we make mistakes. And we are becoming a society instead of fessing up to our mistakes. I love it when somebody says, I, I'm taking full responsibility for this. And when somebody says, well, here's the consequence for that, they're like, well, wait a minute. I decided it's going to take consequences. I didn't take responsibility. Now, that's different. And it's not. Once we realize that there are consequences of things, we immediately want to give away some of that freedom so we don't have to deal with the consequences. I honestly believe, you know, uh, Einstein, I think, said it best. He said, you know, a, a computer can screw up what it takes a 1,000 people to screw up in a day in a matter of seconds. We can make a lot of mistakes very quickly. And if we are without leaders and we are our own self-determined beings, then when we stub our toe on the couch, we can't blame the couch. I wonder, you know, I, I, I wonder, um, you know, people obviously don't um, pay attention to who they elect, but you're talking about, you know, consequences. So if we if we elected a representative and they represent us, we elected them, and we fall asleep at the wheel. We're not paying attention to what they're doing. And that leader, not leader, that representative, okay, even though that's the person we put in power, that that representative does something to start a war with another country or whatever, whatever it is they do. Shouldn't the people be held responsible for that, like collaborators in that crime, just like any business? business, the the owners of that business are responsible for what their employees do. If the people in the country were held responsible for the crimes in in along with the, you know, congressman and the president also being held responsible, we're all held responsible. Wouldn't then people pay a little more attention to who they elect? Well Tom, I gotta agree with that, but here's the problem. We are held responsible for it. In our sons and, and, and our fathers that come back wounded from the war, um, we're the ones who suffer mostly. Congress seldomly does. Uh, the president is sitting behind his desk deciding what the casual representative is going to be. So uh, we're taxed higher. I mean, look at the national debt. That is partially war as well. So, yeah, we are punished for war. The problem is ultimately we are also being punished for our compassion um, with, you know, welfare and uh, excessive immigration with horrid immigration laws that, you know, say you have to do all this to get into the country when at one point in time you had to be quarantined to make sure you wouldn't kill anybody with disease. I mean, mm-hmm. if you really think about it, we do suffer by, our, by the laws. The unfortunate thing is it doesn't hit home hard enough right now. You know, mm-hmm. People like us, people who listen to this radio, obviously have felt some of these consequences and are trying to yeah. tell others that hey, we, we are, we're actually being punished. Uh, you don't maybe realize it, but the large amount of unemployment, which is dealing with large amounts of poverty. Oh, uh, well, I, I'm thinking, I'm, but I'm going, I'm thinking more along the lines like, okay, um, you know, when Hillary Clinton was senator, okay. And um, or no, I want to go back to when she was the first lady with with um, Bill Clinton as governor in Arkansas, and the whole Whitewater thing went down. I want to go back that far, okay? Yeah, and they're committing terrific. and they're committing and they're committing crimes, okay? They're committing crimes. I think that not only you know when. You know, they should have been prosecuted, but I think not only should they prosecute them, they should say, hey, Arkansas, you guys elected this goon, okay? You guys are going to suffer. You guys are going to pay for electing this guy. You know, if she's a senator, the people that elected her, you guys are going to pay for that. I, I think the rest, you know, the rest of the country should, 
you know, punish that, you know, the constituents of the people that keep electing the idiots that keep, you get what I'm saying? Not the rest Uh of the country being responsible, but the ones that elected that representative be responsible for electing that representative. And how would you enact that? The the problem with that is how do you punish them? I mean, I, I, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. How you, I don't know how you do. You know, thirty <laughs> days. Thirty thirty days community service for everybody in their in their district. Something, you know, because well, you know too many of these representatives. Too many of these representatives just keep getting elected and elected over and over and over again because people just vote for their party and they don't even pay attention to who it is. But it, you know, if they had some sort of culpability for electing officials that break the law and be held responsible in some way. I don't even if it's thirty days community service working for other people throughout the state, you know, throughout the country. I don't know. I don't know what (laughs) y'all are aware that George Soros is funding all the Democrats, right? Yeah, Yeah. that's 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 what I hear. Yeah. And he's got his myth in the European Union too. And so Hey guys, I just I got noticed we're really good we're discussion. I think we're losing time here. Um I've only got one minute left and we gotta close out the show. So I wanted to get Tony's opinion. Sorry, Tony, I was gonna bring you back on but we're uh, we've just run out of time. Uh thank you, Stella, for being on and thank you for your input. Um any you. last word you wanna say, Dave, before we close out the show. I just wanna thank everybody for listening and I really want you to think about um talking to maybe your friends, family, just the definition of leader. Are these people, should these people be doing what they're doing? And perhaps we will get equal treatment under the law, and we will see people prosecuted who break them. Mm-hmm. I agree. I'll send an I, email to Tom. <laughs> thank you, everyone. I want to remind everybody that um, they're, you know, prepperbroadcasting.com has shows every day, live shows, same time, 6 p.m. Pacific time, 9 p.m. Eastern. You can listen to live shows every day. And also there's an excellent 24-7 feed that you can listen in. Thank you for tuning in, everyone. This is Tom with GolfStrike.com. Republic of Bankland, United States of Bankland.